This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. Good morning, dear students. We will continue the learning of white matter of the cerebral hemisphere. Yesterday, we have learned the structure, basic structure of the cerebral hemisphere. That means there is an outer covering of gray matter throughout, which is called cortex, and inside is the heavy mass of white matter. And in the white matter, again, buried are basal nuclei. White matter, which is made up of fibers, they, they, are, they are classified into three types, association fibers, commissural fibers, and projection fibers. Association fibers, they are confined to one hemisphere. They connect different parts of the same hemisphere. Association fibers <coughs> can be short or long. They can be short or long. Short ones connect the neighboring gyri. The long ones connect the different lobes and they form appreciable bundles. We have learned yesterday five bundles, five bundles of long association fibers. Superior longitudinal fasciculus, inferior longitudinal fasciculus, uncinate fasciculus, pingulum, and the fronto-occipital fasciculum. Next, we came to commissural fibers. Commissural fibers, they cross the midline and connect similar parts of both hemispheres. That means homotopic loci. So commercial fibers cross and connect homotopic loci. They may connect a few heterotopic loci also, but mainly homotopic loci are connected. And uh, they are also five in number. The largest commissure, most important, is corpus callosum, about which we have learned in great detail yesterday. We have learned the shape, the parts, the relations, and the fate of all its fibers, how it forms the forces minor, forceps major, how and how it, and how its fibers intersect with the projection fibers, and how the posterior fibers do not intersect and form tapetum, etc. And finally, we have seen this this slide which you have seen, the applied anatomy, split brain syndrome. So that was what was done yesterday. Now we will start now. So we'll start learning the other commissures, like anterior commissure. Now about anterior commissure, I already uh, broached this earlier. Now anterior commissure, to appreciate this now, we must see a good sagittal section like this. Look at this, this oval area. This is the anterior commissure. You see, this is the rostrum of the corpus callosum, and this is the laminate terminalis at the junction. That is one point, and this is the anterior column of the fornix. The column of the fornix and laminate terminalis. Between these two is the anterior commissure. It looks oval, but if you see in a coral section, it looks transverse like this. In a sagittal section, it looks oval. So that is the address of the anterior commissure. Now we learn more about the anterior commissure. It is oval in shape. It lies behind the laminate terminalis. Just now I have shown you. Just behind the laminate terminalis. And it runs transversely in front of the anterior column of fornix. Again, this is the anterior column of fornix. It runs transversely. Seen <coughs> transversely in this coronal section. Please mute yourselves. Please, I request you, please mute yourselves. Now, it's like a cupid's bow transversely. Please, students, please mute yourselves. Please mute yourselves, otherwise I'll mute all of you. Okay. Now, uh, if you dissect out, you will appreciate it like a cupid's bow, Manmatha Bano, Lagavant Manmatha. So, what does it connect? It connects the middle and inferior temporal gyri. It also connects the olfactory regions of the two hemispheres. It grooves the antero-inferior aspect of the lentiform nucleus. This is an important point. When you learn the lentiform nucleus in the class of basal nuclei, this is the important relation of lentiform nucleus. Antero-inferiorly, lentiform nucleus is grooved by the anterior commissure. This is the lentiform nucleus, and it's grooved by the anterior commissure. That is enough about the anterior commissure. Now we come to second commissure, next commissure, what is called hippocampal commissure. It is also called 
for next commissioner i told you about hippocampus yesterday which is a part of the papus circuit and the hippocampus is a big nucleus which is seen in the floor of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle hippocampi friends they come posterior superiorly and they are called fornix now if you see this picture this is the difference of this side hippocampus and this of the other side and just behind the perineum the fornices of both sides posterior columns of fornix or cusp of fornix this is called is called cusp of fornix or posterior column of fornix the fornix constitutes difference of hippocampus of both sides and below the perineum of the corpus callosum the two crura or two posterior columns you need to form the body of the fornix but before anything the two fornices are connected by you look at the sheet here it's not like a bundle it looks like a sheet this is the hippocampal commissure or fornix commissure through which hippocampi of both sides are connected with each other so the hippocampi of both sides are connected through this commissure that is why it's called hippocampal commissure it is, it is also called fornix commissure now we will learn another small commissure please mute yourselves please please mute yourselves please mute yourselves now please please mute. okay we'll continue now posterior commissure now when you learn the diencephalon for the first time you will appreciate diencephalon has an upper part and lower part separated by one sulcus called hypothalamic sulcus the upper part is called pars dorsalis diencephali pars dorsalis diencephali pdd contains a few parts which includes epithalamus so epithalamus the part posterior commissure matter so posterior commissure is a part of the epithalamus it is ekkadu undi anadi next question now ikkada chudandi now this is the pineal gland pineal gland has a stalk in front this picture is better pineal gland has a stalk this is the stalk of pineal gland which has two lamina this is the upper lamina and this is the lower lamina lower lamina is continuing with the superior colliculus of the midbrain and look at this thickness in the lower lamina of the pineal gland where it is bending back to become continuous with the superior colliculus now this is the location of the posterior commissure so this thickness now in the previous this also it should be somewhere here so posterior commissure it is located in the caudal lamina of the pineal stalk so i told you this is the caudal lamina now it connects what does it connect it connects various parts of the midbrain like the superior colliculi and then pretractal nuclei and just in front of the midbrain is the interstitial nucleus of kahal it is called kahal not kajal the, the gentleman is called kajal kahal anyway this is about the posterior commissure so appreciate its address mainly in the caudal lamina of the pineal stalk here is the address now we come to the last commissure what is called habenular commissure habenular commissure now to understand this one you know you must know what is habenular nuclei habenular nuclei are again parts of epithalamus which posterior commissure is also a part of epithalamus is a part of pars dorsalis diencephali i told you little while ago so now to understand this now this picture is necessary this is a difficult picture for you to understand here lateral ventricle is cut open so all this cavity is lateral ventricle so what all you see here is the floor of the lateral ventricle here so if you cut open the lateral ventricle you will appreciate the middle part of the floor is formed by this big nucleus called thalamus this is the thalamus and i was telling you about pulvinar yesterday this is the pulvinar here anyway this is the thalamus and medially at the thalamus no there is a white matter bundle here this bundle what is called stria medullaris thalami stria medullaris thalami it is also called stria habenularis stria medullaris thalami is seen better in the medial view always so this is the thalamus this is the semimedullar thalami and this is the superior colliculus of the midbrain so between these three at the superior colliculus ki thalamus ki stria medullar thalami ki madhyalo there is a triangular area this is called habenular triangle or habenular trigone 
Now, this is the, this is the site where we have one nucleus called habenular nucleus. Habenular nucleus, okay? And the two habenular nuclei are connected by one commissure, what is called habenular commissure. This is only of theoretical interest anyway. So here I give the information. It, habenular commissure connects the habenular nuclei. Habenular nucleus is a part of epithalamus. And here I gave you the address of the habenular nucleus in the habenular trigone, bounded by the semimedular thalamus, pulvinar of the thalamus, and the superior Well, that is all about the habenular commissure and commissures also in, in general. Now we come to a very important aspect, projection fibers. Very, very important. Projection fibers are the only type of white matter of the cerebral cortex, which connect the cerebral cortex with the uh, projection fibers are the only important part, uh, uh, part of the cerebral hemisphere, which connect the cerebral cortex with other parts of the central nervous system. Other parts can be anything, can be starting from basal nuclei, the diencephalon, the brainstem, like that, and the spinal cord. These are the parts now which are connected uh, by the projection fibers. So now the projection fibers can be ascending or descending. Sensory fibers, they take information about the cerebral cortex, and motor impulses come down from cerebral cortex. So now, so projection fibers connect the cerebral cortex with lower levels in the brain and spinal cord. Actually, diencephalon also, diencephalon or basal nuclei also. They are corticofugal and they're going away, efferent. From the cerebral cortex, they go down either directly to spinal cord or to other centers called extrapyramidal centers. So they are corticofugal. Okay, or corticopetal afferents, sensations which come to cerebral cortex towards. So, so the same word, same uh, the words which you learned earlier, like centripetal, centrifugal. Here we say corticofugal and corticopetal, and they converge from all directions of the corpus striatum. Corpus, uh, they converge from all directions of the hemisphere to the corpus striatum, forming a huge fan-shaped sheet called coronary radiata. Let me see the picture. See here. Now here, in the coronal section pictures now, I showed you, this is the transfer section. I showed you the lentiform nucleus here. This is the transfer section. And I'll show you coronal section again. So this is the lentiform nucleus. So lentiform nucleus looks triangular in coronal section or transfer section. Now in this dissection, which I'm trying to show you here, here, uh, this is a dissection done from the lateral aspect. Lentiform nucleus is removed. So please note here, as I'm showing, take this as the address of the lentiform nucleus. And the projection fibers, ascending or descending, doesn't matter. They, are, they come from all parts of hemisphere, cerebral hemisphere and they form a huge uh, ridge, like radiating crown, called coronary radiata. So projection fibers are, to begin with, are called coronary radiata. Coronary radiata is radiating crown no matter. So projection fiber, all mixed together form coronary radiata to begin with. As they come down, they get less and less place, and they have to adjust themselves. But to begin with, there is a vast space in the cerebral cortex and they form a very broad, uh, fan-shaped, fibrous sheet. I told you it forms mostly in a parasagittal plane. Uh, I, this also I showed you in other picture. You see, now this sheet, this sheet, this is the projection fiber sheet. Projection fibers form a, a, a sheet in a slightly oblique uh, parasagittal plane, and the association fibers are either medial or lateral, and commissural fibers pass through, intersect with the projection fibers. So these are the projection fibers. So these are lentiform nucleus. Projection fibers beyond lentiform nucleus, above or below, or posterior, anterior, anywhere. Now here, now these are lentiform nucleus. And projection fibers in front or behind or above or below, everywhere they're called coronary radiata. So these are all beautiful pictures of coronary radiata. So this is a picture actually, as I told you, this is a dissection done from lateral aspect, lentiform nucleus is removed here. Okay, now if you see this one, this is an actual dissection.
but this is done from middle aspect about this i'll talk about later uh, once again look at this picture this is also an actual dissection but these are all corner radiator fibers and here lentiform nucleus is a plucked out lentiform nucleus is deep to insula as you will see again the lentiform nucleus is deep to insula where the most of deep insula so all these structures are removed insula all the structures and lentiform nucleus itself is removed that is how you see this kind of a beautiful dissection where projection fibers continuation can be seen continuation can be seen this is an actual photograph not a picture now let us learn more about projection fibers so projection fibers to begin with they converge on the lentiform nucleus beyond lentiform nucleus they form a broad sheet in a parasagittal plane that is called corona radiata as you see in this picture or other pictures as they go down the place available becomes less and less so then what do they do let us see as they descend they become more compact naturally and pass through a v shaped space between the lentiform nucleus laterally and the caudate nucleus and the thalamus medially now this v shaped band is called internal capsule internal capsule is a very very famous name now this is best appreciated in a cross section like this i told you this is a lentiform nucleus beyond that corona radiata okay as they go down the parasagittal plane is gone because they have only the only place available is this kind of a v shaped place available between the caudate nucleus which is one of the basal nuclei between the caudate nucleus and the thalamus medially and the lentiform nucleus laterally there is a v shaped space through which projection of fibers will have to continue there is no choice <coughs> so this v shaped bundle now is called internal capsule that means projection fibers to begin with are called corona radiata and as it is said a little bit below they are called internal capsule now see here so see now now to begin with they are called corona radiata and as they descend they are called inter capsule here here what is the section done here this is a dissection done from the lateral aspect uh, the insula and lentiform nucleus they are all removed that is how and why we are able to see the internal capsule other internal capsule is not possible to be seen from the side from the lateral aspect now this is a dissection actual dissection photograph done from medial aspect medially what are the relations of internal capsule as i showed you thalamus thalamus and caudate nucleus these two are removed so here you see this is the area impression of the thalamus now this is the impression of the caudate nucleus so beautiful dissection really and beyond these two these are coronary radiata and once you see the boundary of the caudate nucleus the inter capsule starts so here inter capsule is seen from the middle aspect as we have removed the thalamus from here and the caudate nucleus from here okay here we have removed the lentiform nucleus from laterally so please get the address of the internal capsule now we will learn the details of internal capsule internal capsule fibers do not stop there they continue they continue we will we'll talk about them now in cross section the internal capsule looks like a v shaped band sandwiched between the lentiform nucleus and Uh, that is laterally at the caudate nucleus and the thalamus medially i showed you already this is something which you must print in your minds very strongly this is a very important picture which is there in every textbook laterally it is deep to now let us see the picture so what are the relations of intercapsule now intercapsule is here medially caudate nucleus and thalamus all right laterally in the form nucleus but that's not enough laterally start from surface laterally this is the cortex of the insula cortex of the insula the insula can be seen by separating the opercula from the in, in the region of the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus so lateral relations of internal capsule include the insular cortex and the, this is the white matter of insula this white matter of insula is sometimes called extreme capsule extreme capsule and then we have a thin sheet tenuous sheet as you call tenuous sheet of gray matter called claustrum claustrum and then again another white matter separated claustrum from the lentiform nucleus this sheet is called external capsule 
and finally the three parts put together constitute the lentiform nucleus i repeat the later relations of the internal capsule insular cortex insula the extreme capsule or white matter of insula then the claustrum which is again a basal nucleus then the external capsule external capsule and finally these three together lentiform nucleus all these constitute the later relations of the internal capsule so laterally it is due to the insula its white matter and the extreme capsule jata kada and then the claustrum the thin sheet of gray matter the external capsule and finally the lentiform nucleus all these are lateral to medial now let us go to the details of internal capsule what does it contain it contains projection fibers all right and we know projection fibers are of two types afferent and two different afferent sorry afferent and efferent afferent ne manamo corticopetal antamo afferents ante they carry sensations towards the cerebral cortex efferents ante they carry orders impulses motor impulses from the cerebral cortex down to the subsidiary centers starting from the basal nuclei joint cephalon brain stem and spinal cord so corticopetal corticofugal first we will learn corticopetal fibers which are afferent ikkada we must know some fundamentals the afferents emerge from the thalamus ante ee internal capsule lo no projection paina coronary digital lo no unnatundi afferent fibers thalamus nunchi adni chatte paiki spinal cord nunchi brain stem nunchi raavu endukante thalamus is the great sensory center and this happens to be the last relay station also before cerebral cortex for all sensations except all faction thalamus kurinchi meer malli physical nerchukoni undochu malli nerchukuntaru thalamus is a great sensory center except all faction all sensations must go through thalamus before they reach the cerebral cortex kabatti the afferents sensation afferents sensory afferents anni kuda thalamus lo relay ayipoyayi general ga sensory pathways to cerebral cortex are three neuronal chains first order neurons are pseudorepolar cells the spinal ganglia as well as pineal nerve ganglia which have sensory components those are the first order neurons second order neurons are situated either in the spinal cord or brain stem and they cross the midline and they relay in the thalamus so thalamus is the third order neuron so thalamus is the afferents go to cerebral cortex kabatti ee projection fibers manu kinda trace chesinappudu ఆ అప్పర్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ప్రొజెక్షన్ ఫైబర్స్ లోనే అఫరెన్స్ ఉంటాయి అంటే ఇంటర్నల్ క్యాప్సూల్ లోను కరోనా రేడియేటర్ మాత్రమే ఆ అఫరెన్స్ ఫైబర్స్ ఉంటాయి అని అర్థం చేసుకోవాలి ఆ ఇంటర్ క్యాప్సూల్ కింద కంటిన్యూ అయినప్పుడు దాంట్లో అఫరెన్స్ ఉండవు ఆ లోయర్ పార్ట్ లో అఫరెన్స్ సెపరేట్ గా ఉండి ఆ తలమస్ సెపరేట్ గా వెళ్తున్నాయి సో యాజ్ ఫర్ బి టాక్ యాజ్ వెన్ బి టాక్ అబౌట్ ది అఫరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంటర్నల్ క్యాప్సూల్ కార్టికోపెటల్ ఫైబర్స్ దే ఆర్ ఫ్రమ్ ది తలమస్ అండ్ తలమస్ ఆన్ వర్డ్స్ అప్ వర్డ్స్ ఓన్లీ ఎందుకు ఇప్పుడు చెప్పాను మీకు తలామస్ ఇస్ ద లాస్ట్ రిలేషన్ మిగిలిన సెన్సేషన్స్ అన్ని కూడా ఎక్సెప్ట్ ఆల్ ఫ్యాక్షన్ మిగిలిన సెన్సేషన్స్ అన్ని కూడా తలామస్ రిలే అయిపోయాయి ఫైనల్ గా తలామస్ నుంచి దే ప్రొజెక్ట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ సెరిబుల్ కాంటాక్ట్స్ త్రూ ది ఇంటర్నల్ క్యాప్స్యూల్ అండ్ ది కార్నర్ రేడియేటర్ అది ఇది ఒక ఫండమెంటల్ బిగ్ గట్ గా చెప్పాను అన్నమాట సో చూడండి ఇక్కడ ది అఫరెన్స్ ఎమర్జ్ ఫ్రమ్ ది తలామస్ విచ్ ఇస్ ది గ్రేట్ సెన్సర్ సెంటర్ ది లాస్ట్ రిలేషన్ బిఫోర్ సెరిబుల్ కాంటాక్ట్స్ for all sensations except all faction now from the thalamus the efferents radiate to the cerebral cortex to all parts of cerebral cortex and they form some four appreciable bundles called they are called thalamic radiations look at this picture so this is a diagrammatic picture but you can see in a simplified manner so this is called superior thalamic radiation inferior thalamic radiation posterior and anterior thalamic radiation so the last leg of sensations which go from thalamus to cerebral cortex they form mainly four bundles they are called thalamic radiations and they are called accordingly anterior superior posterior and inferior now what fibers are contained in them significant fibers contained in them are the optic radiation and the posterior radiation untai anamata for example now this is the posterior radiation okay dental optic radiation untadu anamata 
అంటే పోసి రేడియేషన్ పోసి తరం రేడియేషన్ ఇస్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ సినానమస్ విత్ ఆప్టిక్ రేడియేషన్ యూ నో ఆప్టిక్ రేడియేషన్ కమ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ లెటర్ జెంట్లేట్ బాడీ టు ది విజువల్ కార్టెక్స్ అండ్ యూ ఆల్సో నో ఆప్టిక్ రేడియేషన్ ఈజ్ ద లాస్ట్ లెగ్ ఆఫ్ ది విజువల్ పాత్వే సో ఆప్టిక్ రేడియేషన్ అనేది ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ సెక్షన్ లోనూ ఎనీ సెక్షన్ లో మనం ఈజీగా ఐడెంటిఫై చేయగలుగుతారు వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ సో ఆప్టిక్ రేడియేషన్ ఇస్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ సినానమస్ విత్ ద పోస్ట్ సీరియస్ తరం రేడియేషన్ అలాగే ఇఫ్ యూ సీ ఎ కరోల్ సెక్షన్ if you see a coronal section i'll show you in a coronal section the inferior radiation later anyway now please note that posterior thalamic radiation ante optic radiation eh alage inferior thalamic radiation ante acoustic radiation eh acoustic radiation is the last leg of the auditory pathway auditory pathway start from the hair cells in the cochlea you know and finally the last leg is from the middle genitalia body to the uh, auditory area number 41 in the superior temporal gyrus so last legs of uh, optic pa- optic uh, visual pathway is the optic radiation last leg of the auditory pathway is the acoustic radiation acoustic radiation constitutes the inferior thalamic radiation or the optic radiation constitutes the posterior thalamic radiation even me bag dice is called now that is about the afferent fibers now we will learn about the efferent fibers descending fibers and matter that's more important the descending component of the projection fibers they are in the coronal radiator they are coming from the cerebral cortex all parts of cerebral cortex they are coming from the coronal radiator they descend in the inter capsule so the descending fiber continue in the crest cerebrae of midbrain ante chusaru kada ikkada first coronal radiator unnai descending fibers first coronal radiator lo unnai tarvata they continue in the internal capsule aithe they are still continuing into midbrain midbrain lo meeru crest cerebrae nechukunnaru most ventral part so the descending fibers matramo cheppaga the ascending fibers emo thalamus nunchi attu nunchi attu paike kindaku raavu kinduku chevi descending fibers cortico fecal fibers matrame ee cortico fecal fibers they continue into the crest cerebrae of the midbrain and then they continue into basilar part of the pons and they also continue into permits of the medulla oblongata అయితే దారిలో కొన్ని కొన్ని ఖర్చు అయిపోతూ ఉంటాయి యాజ్ ద డిసినింగ్ ఫైబర్స్ దే దే ప్రొజెక్ట్ ఆన్ టు ద మోటార్ న్యూక్లియర్ ఆఫ్ ద క్రీనియల్ నర్వ్స్ దే దే ఆర్ సమ్ ఆర్ ఓవర్ ద రిమైనింగ్ ఫైబర్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ టు రిలే ఇన్ ది ఫైనల్ కార్డ్ దే కమ్ డౌన్ ఎనీవే బై అండ్ లార్జ్ ది డిసినింగ్ ఫైబర్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ద కర్న రేడియేటా దెన్ ద ఇంటర్ క్యాప్సూల్ దెన్ దే డిసెండ్ ఇన్ ది క్రస్ సెరిబ్రై అండ్ ద ఆఫ్ ద మిడ్ బ్రెయిన్ అండ్ దెన్ basilar part of the pons and that permits of the medulla oblongata this is the national highway for them aithe internal capsule ki crest cerebrae ki junction daggara optic tract cross chestundi if you dissect and see uh, if you remove the for example here ikkada you are seeing the coronal radiata here and the internal capsule and they are continuing into crest cerebrae ekkada exact junction ekkada maru teliyadu so we take the the optic tract which crosses here as a criterion to demarcate internal capsule from the crest cerebrae so the internal capsule cross chesin chota sorry optic tract cross chesin chota optic tract cross chesin chota internal capsule crest cerebrae ga continue avutundi ani artham cheskovali see that the descending fibers continue in the crest cerebrae of the midbrain the junction being where they are crossed by the optic tract at the point they descend further in the basilar part of the pons and and most of them or some of them in the permits of the medulla oblongata some of them indika nanante descending fibers konemo they terminate they relay with the motor nuclei in the brain stem itself brain stem lo we have some motor nuclei third gaani fourth gaani fifth gaani sixth gaani seventh itla ninth 
టెన్త్ అన్నిటికీ లెవెంత్ ట్వెల్త్ అన్నిటికీ మోటార్ న్యూక్లియర్ అయ్యి వీటన్నిటికీ కంట్రోల్ చేయడానికి కార్టికో న్యూక్లియర్ ఫైబర్స్ సో కార్టికో న్యూక్లియర్ ఫైబర్స్ కూడా డిసైనింగ్ ఫైబర్స్ లోనే ఉంటాయి కార్టికో న్యూక్లియర్ ఏమో ఆ మోటార్ న్యూక్లియర్ దగ్గర ఖర్చు అయిపోయినాయి ద రిమైనింగ్ ఫైబర్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ డెస్టెడ్ గోట్ స్పైనల్ కార్డ్ విచ్ రిలే ఇన్ ది మిడిల్ ఆఫ్ బ్లంగెట్ ఆఫ్ హాల్ రిలే అండ్ దే ఆర్ కాల్ కార్టికో స్పైనల్ ఫైబర్స్ దే కంటిన్యూ డౌన్ ఇన్ టు ద పెరమిట్స్ మోస్ట్లీ కార్టికో న్యూక్లియర్ ఫైబర్స్ ఆల్సో డిసైన్ పెరమిట్స్ పార్ట్లీ so the decision so anyway you must know this national highway this pathway coronary radiata intercapsule crested wave midbrain basal part of pons and then the permits of medulla oblongata this all this tract should be known very well okay the decision all these things in all these things now we will learn further ipudu internal capsule lo parts ate అసలు ఆ పార్ట్స్ కంటే ముందు ఎఫరెంట్ ఫైబర్స్ మీద చెప్పేశాను కదా డిఫరెంట్ ఫైబర్స్ లో అసలు ఏమి ఉంటాయి డిఫరెంట్ ఫైబర్స్ లో అంటే డిఫరెంట్ ఫైబర్స్ వెళ్ళే డెస్టినేషన్స్ ఏంటి ఏంటి వీనో కార్టికో స్పైనల్ విచ్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో కాల్ పెరమిడల్ ఫైబర్స్ అండ్ ఐ టోల్డ్ యూ కార్టికో న్యూక్లియర్ విచ్ సెట్ ఇన్ ది మోటార్ న్యూక్లియర్ ఆఫ్ ది క్లీనియల్ నర్వ్స్ ఇన్ ద బ్రెయిన్ స్టెప్ సో ఐ టోల్డ్ యూ ఆల్రెడీ స్టార్టింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ థర్డ్ టు ట్వెల్వ్ యూ హ్యావ్ ప్లెంటీ ఆఫ్ మోటార్ న్యూక్లియర్ ఇన్ ద బ్రెయిన్ స్టెప్ they all receive afferents uh, from the cerebral cortex they are the cortico nuclear fibers they also constitute part of cortico fugal fibers and then at the time of pons you have learned the ventral part of pons lo the cerebral part of pons lo there are huge masses of nuclei called uh, ponte nuclei and uh, ponte nuclei again are controlled by cerebral cortex the afferents being cortico pontine so cortico pontine kuda uh, descending fibers say. అలాగే రెటికులర్ ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది బ్రెయిన్ స్టెమ్ కి కొన్ని కూడా ఉంటాయి అనమాట సో ఆల్ దీస్ కన్స్టిట్యూట్ దిసెన్ ఫైబర్స్ అయితే మనకి మెయిన్ గా మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పెరమిడల్ కార్టికల్ స్పైల్ మనకి మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అనమాట అలాగే సబ్ ఫైబర్స్ గో టు ద ప్రొజెక్ట్ ఆన్ టు ది రెడ్ న్యూక్లియస్ ఆఫ్ మిడ్ బ్రెయిన్ రుబ్రల్ ఇస్ అబ్జెక్టివ్ ఫర్ రెడ్ న్యూక్లియస్ సో ఆల్ దీస్ కన్స్టిట్యూట్ ది పెరమిడల్ సారీ డిసెన్ ఫైబర్స్ do not mention here some are cortico olivary also to the inferior olivar nucleus now to we will learn the inter capsule in greater detail inter capsule is said to be having five parts anterior limb genu posterior limb retrolentiform part and sublentiform part ah ee parts ani meeku chaala tharuga nechukovali anterior limb genu posterior limb retrolentiform part and sublentiform part now we will learn each part in detail now what is anterior limb so the anterior limb ante idan matter between the lentiform nucleus and the cordate nucleus between the lentiform nucleus and the cordate nucleus so this is the anterior limb this is the anterior limb okay between the lentiform nucleus and the cordate nucleus dintlo a fibers untai dintlo anterior thalamic radiation thalamus nunchi paiki atlage a malli descending fibers em untayi fronto pontal fibers untayi ante cortico pontine ante kuda fronto pontine temporo pontine parieto pontal occipital pontine ani the ponte nuclei receive uh, afferents from all lobes of four lobes of cerebral cortex so cortico pontine lo malli four four anamata ఫ్రంట్ పాంటైన్ ఎప్పుడో పాంటైన్ ఆక్స్పెట్ పాంటైన్ పెరట పాంటైన్ లాగా ఇక్కడ యాంటీరియర్ లింబ్ లో ఫ్రంట్ పాంటైన్ ఫైబర్స్ ఉంటాయి అలాగే యాంటీరియర్ థెరమిక్ రేడియేషన్ సో దట్ ఈస్ అబౌట్ ది యాంటీరియర్ లింబ్ నవ్ ఈ కొట్టు జెన్యు సో యాంటీరియర్ లింబ్ ఉంది నేర్చుకున్నాం ఇప్పుడు జెన్యు నేర్చుకుంటాం జెన్యు జెన్యు అంటే తెలిసి మనకి ఇది అనమాట నీ లాగా బెండ్ యాంటీరియర్ లింబ్ పోస్టల్ లింబ్ మధ్యలో so it's very easy to understand genu this is genu this is the anterior limb this is the posterior limb and this is genu genu le untayi most important are cortico nuclear fibers genu contains cortico nuclear fibers cortico nuclear fibers adi descending anamata malli ascending em untayi anterior part of the superior thalamic radiation anterior part of superior thalamic radiation anamata avi from which nuclear thalamus are given here but these things you understand better with the class of the thalamus so this is about the genu genu okay 
Now we go to posterior limb. So you know posterior limb, it is between the lens and the thalamus, obviously. So posterior limb is between the lintiform nucleus and the thalamus. So, so this is the posterior limb between the thalamus and the lintiform nucleus. Posterior limb is bigger than anterior limb. Anyway, what it contains are most important, corticospinal fibers. The most important essential fibers that you need are corticospinal, corticospinal, corticospinal. They are contained in the posterior limb, but it's not in the mind low, mind low. Corticospinal fibers, they are contained in the posterior limb. That's important. And then frontopontal fibers, corticorubral and superior thalamic radiation. Even you okay. So most important is the corticospinal fibers. From the ventral posterior nucleus. Ventral posterior lateral, ventral posterior medial. What key? Middle limb is cut, spiral limb is cut, tragic limb is cut. Kapati, posterior nucleus, ventral posterior nucleus, fibers are all important. If you can add a chest, sensations are important. Corticospinal fibers are important. Motor activity is important. That is about the posterior limb. So this is a classical picture which I showed you previously also. So this is the posterior limb. This is genu anterior limb. Now we try to learn the other parts of ventral capsule, namely retral lintiform part. Now this is the retral lintiform part. It is strictly speaking, it is lintiform nucleus can take bite on the. But strictly speaking, it is coronal radiator can the lekha ventral capsule kado. Kani, Anipuska Lono, Retal Capsule Lo, Retal Lentifo Part of Chetunaru, Mangoda Alana So, though this is strictly speaking a part of the coronary radiata, this is to be taken as Retal Lentifo Part. In the Mundi Japan, we could Retal Lentifo Part and optic radiation, eh? Optic radiation. So, this optic radiation, which is seen very beautifully in a transfer section, just lateral to the posterior horn. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Optic radiation is just lateral boundary separated by this white color, tapetum, tapetum. So this is the retro lentiform part. So retro lentiform part and optic radiation. Lentiform nucleus can be the part. Now we go to sub lentiform part, last part. Sub lentiform part. Until lentiform nucleus is kind of done. Until our coronal section cover. Anyway, in the middle panel, sub lentiform part and it is synonymous with the acoustic radiation. And the medium clear body in the chest. Acoustic radiation passes through artery cortex to number 41, superior temporal gyrosin matter. It is medium clear body in the chest. Medium clear body in the chest. radiation. It mainly contains fibers from the medium clear body of thalamus, which form the acoustic radiation. This radiation passes. Accurately, the lentiform nucleus is a kin energy. And the sub lentiform part on tamo. Finally, it has to go to artery cortex in the superior gyrus, temporal gyrus and the anti tamsor temporal gyrus, number 41. Now, put it on the question. Is the lentiform nucleus kada? Is the lentiform nucleus? So, is the lateral ventricle? Is the body of lateral ventricle? The central part of lateral ventricle? The other one is the lateral ventricle. This is called the inferior horn of lateral ventricle. If you have a nucleus, you can see the white matter. You can see the sub-lentiform part. The sub-lentiform part. Now, the medigenital body is the thalamus. The acoustic radiation fibers, the projection fibers, the lentiform nucleus, the inferior horn of lateral ventricle, the lentiform nucleus, the sub-lentiform part, the form of the Superior temporal gyrus quilt to the number 41. The main artery area, audio sensory area, 41. So 41 key, medium clear body in chi, illa, lymphon nucleus can in chi, ever get this at Buddha. So it goes like that. So this is what is the sub lymphon part. I think just got it. Sub lymphon part and a acoustic radiation. So what it contains, artery cut, acoustic radiation matter. Across radiation, the last leg of the artery pathway. It extends from the medium plate body to the number 41. 41 according to the superior temporal gyrus. At the 
anterior transverse temporal gyrus. When the superior temporal gyrus is there, what is it? Anterolateral ga, it is gyrus can be seen. That is called anterior transverse temporal gyrus. Adi, that part continuous cavity, the superior temporal gyrus both constitute number forty one, which is the primary or the sensory area. Adi, that is where we acoustic radiation subject from part. Now this is a summary. This is a beautiful picture. These are pictures are from Grey's Anatomy. You can go through these things now. What each part contains: anterior limb below, limb tie, genital limb tie, posterior limb below, tie. Anterior limb below, which are called mainly the cutaneous cores. Only frontal portal fibers, super thermal, anti-thermal radiation. Genital limb mainly the cutaneous cores. Only cortical nuclear fibers. Posterior limb below, most important, cortical spinal, cortical spinal, cortical spinal. And retroliniform part, part, part is there, madam. Retroliniform part, what does it do? Optical radiation. Each one is subliniform part. Subliniform part, what is it? Optical radiation or acoustic radiation. So what is it? MGB is just a medium field body. Is it a large field body? Is it the most optical radiation? It is subliniform part. This is a uh, this is a picture in nutshell summary of the uh, all constituent fibers of endocapsule. It is got a summary name. So what is it? Anterior limb below. You see, brother, thalamic radiation, no, frontal border fibers, so genital cortical nuclear, posterior limb, no, main go cortical spinal, no. Along with retinal limb part, no, main go optic radiation, no. Subliminal limb part, no, main go acoustic radiation. Atla. Now this is the blood supply of the intercapsule. Intercapsule blood supply, so all heavy out there matter. Intercapsule ki blood supply, it is mainly from the lateral striate branches of the middle cerebral artery. You know, middle cerebral artery is the continuation of the internal carotid artery. Middle cerebral artery passes to the stem of the lateral thalamus. Ala velna pura akara it gives rise to many central branches which pass through the anterior perforated substance, and they are grouped as medial striate and lateral striate. Ah, uh, mainly internal capsule is separated by the lateral striate branches. So, show me the bumalo. So, this is middle cerebral artery. Is that right? So even the lateral side branches are matter. The lateral side branches lo, what type of matter mo? Sir, pedda kundu de. What type of matter? Sir, pedda kundu de matter. A pedda kundu de de matter. Is that right? The pain is called very important. The artery ni char cut ani side discharge kar pete aro. This is called char cut artery or artery of cerebral hemorrhage. Anta de ni. In this case, this artery is more liable for rupture compared to other arteries. So this is a very important artery. Artery of Uh, artery of the cerebral hemorrhage or charcot artery, which is which is the largest of the lateral branches branches of the uh, lateral side branches of the middle cerebral artery. Uh, of course, internal uh, capsule is also separated by many other arteries from the anterior cerebral artery, uh, from the posterior cerebral artery also. However, mainly from the lateral side branches of the middle cerebral artery. And the largest charcot artery of cerebral hemorrhage, as we call it, Baga. Applied anatomy. The anatomy of the intercapsule is due to hemorrhage or infarction, leads to loss of the sensations. Intercapsule damage is due to what kind of condition? Peru contralateral hemiplegia. Man, there is a cerebral cortex of one side controls half of half of the body. So, but the one side intercapsule damage is due to other side paralysis. Just the matter. Head do this. The head of intercapsule. As a head do head do this. Lower parts are matter. Trunk, limbs, main ga. This is called contralateral hemiplegia. Paksha baato matter theli lo. Now we did two questions. The hemorrhage commonly occurs due to the rupture of the artery of cerebral hemorrhage. Charcot artery, which supplies the posterior limb. Andhke chapter number posterior limb below cortical spinal fibers are nae. Put in school. Posterior limb of the intercapsule is supplied by the charcot artery. Adhe rupture pote posterior limb pote number main ga. This happens to be the largest of the lateral side branches of the middle cerebral artery. Kabati, this artery of the cerebral artery, posterior limb represents that. Under the cortical spinal fibers are there. Kabati, the paralysis of the upper half of the body occurs due to the involvement of the pyramidal fibers and the extrapyramidal fibers in the of the upper limb, trunk and lower limb because they are the ones which are present in the posterior limb. So that is about the internal capsule. Now I unmute you. Uh, please just please, if you want to ask anything, you can you can ask me. Please, I have unmuted you. Please respond. 
Please unmute yourselves also. Yeah, let's go. Have I audible to you so far? Yes. 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 